It is a bit late at this point, but I still wanted to have a go at this topic. So Devon just posted a question in his community tab asking, if you are going to have an arm wrestling match and for any reason you would like to start with a strap, do you have that right? Is it fair to request a match start in a strap? This is not what you think the rules are, but what you think they should be. Either yes, you have a right to the strap or no, you do not. And as people have commented, this question is a little vague and ambiguous because the strap in arm wrestling is a rule, not a right of the athletes. So if both athletes slip apart during the first attempt, the referee can switch to the strap if it has been decided that the slip was natural and not deliberate, which already points to the rules being against deliberate manipulation of the system to gain an advantage. But Devon seems to be positing that if an individual athlete so desired, they would have the ability to request a referee goes straight into the strap. Although he says the right rather than just permission, which kind of puts it in the position that one person can ask and because they asked then to deny moving to the straps would be to deny their right. But most of the comments have interpreted it in a more balanced and realistic sense, that if one athlete requests a strap, then the other athlete can also agree to it, and then they move into the strap rather than messing around with free hands. And then if a second athlete did not agree, the match would continue without straps as usual unless there was a fair slip, and then they would move to the strap. This more realistic interpretation seems quite fair, but it does leave some room for errors. If, for example, in a non-top-level match, a more experienced athlete requested a strap against a less experienced athlete, but the one requesting knew fully well that with a strap, the newer athlete stood no chance, but without it, they might win. But that newer athlete, being less experienced, might not know this and lose the opportunity to win and progress. Of course, this is quite an extreme example of how this might break down, but there are probably other ways too, so let me know if you think of any. But going back to Devon's more ambiguous rights-based example, the ways in which it can be manipulated and abused are obviously much greater. Because some athletes, despite what many will say, actually do better and stand more chance outside of the strap, often because the way they operate relies more on hand, finger and wrist control and dexterity rather than greater brute body strength. With a strap, pronation is much harder to achieve in a full effect because the two hands are clamped together, so you cannot manipulate your way around the opponent's hand and reposition for a greater vantage point. So people who favour more technical top roles and probably also the faster flash pin style eastern athletes would not particularly benefit from being forced into straps. And this is something my Italian friend Martino Doni, otherwise known as the slowest arm wrestler ever, has brought up in research. That broadly the Eastern versus Western style of arm wrestling are quite different. In places like the WAF regions where competitions are usually tournament style with many opponents, so basically Europe and East of Europe too, people favour a much more explosive style of arm wrestling, which does not really require strapping together as often. But in the West, in the Americas, or in the supermatch format, it seems that people have a much slower and more drawn out approach, aiming to hold and bleed the opponent steadily until they can just push through. Not to say that either is better or worse, but as Devon is quite obviously in the Western supermatch slow bleed camp, you can see why he would benefit from being strapped to the opponent and not having to worry about hand control so much. He can just sit there in the comfort that the opponent can't do much except hang off his arm. In his match with Levan, I don't think this is really going to help him as much as against someone like Alijan Muratov, because Levan is also training for this style of heavy and held supermatch, and he is very good at it. Really, I think the match could look pretty strange if it turned into the two of them hanging off each other's arms and waiting, but I don't think it will. I think Levan is much more likely to test the arm and then push through. Back to the rule issue. The purpose of having this non-strapped and then strapped possibility is, as I see it, like most rules, to make it more fair and equal opportunity for all kinds of athletes who favour different styles. Some people are much better out of straps, so they have a chance. Some people are much better in straps, so they have a chance too. It would be similar to starting with or without straight wrists. In theory, if both athletes agreed to it, starting with both wrists hooked might give a better position for both athletes, but a reality is that one person might be much stronger with the wrist than the other, so can get a much better position, leaving the other one much weaker. So it could potentially work, but it could also potentially not work. And this neutral ground of straight wrists and shoulders for all attempts to achieve that not quite so advantageous or disadvantageous opportunity for each athlete. And if, back to the straps, 
one athlete has the right to request straps and potentially could go two straps despite the other athlete not wanting to, then this might give the requester who fully understands this a fairly unfair advantage not even taking into account the actual ability on the table. So the sport then becomes a sport of rule manipulation and tactics, which of course is always going to be a part of whatever rules are enforced, because people always try to eke out whatever advantage they can within whatever framework they have to work in. So yes, rules are not there to benefit a certain athletes. Rules are normally designed to create, in theory, a more equal playing field across all kinds of different athletes to allow more people to take part and progress. Because if the sport becomes a bent wrist start straight to strap framework, then you are just going to see it become a massive hook fest and there will probably not be much actual wrestling going on in the match. Each person will just sit there in a tight hook and wait for the other to tire out and then just push through. So that's my take on Devon's idea for straight to strap as an option, but I think it is always good to keep these kind of rules and requirements in discussion so that if any issue arises, they're not left ignored until something breaks. And if you have any ideas or thoughts on broken rules or reasons why straight to strap should be a possibility, then do let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you later and I'm out.